Hello everyone, welcome back to Snap Bolt. I have another vintage cube draft here for you, and we have a nice pack in front of us because we have an Ancestral Recall. Um, this is one of the best possible cards. It's just insane, one mana draw three. Um, I think this is close between Soul Ring and Black Lotus as one of the best cards. I think those three are the three best for sure. Um, but Ancestral is, is pretty close, I think, to being the best. So that's a nice uh, nice first pick for us. We'll start with that. All right. We can go Ancestral. We have some options here. There's a Regrowth, which we can go like combo-y with Ancestral pretty nice. There's a Worn Power Stone, which I like a lot. There's cards like Sower. Hmm. I do like Worn Power Stone a lot. Maybe it's correct just to take another blue card and sower. That cuts blue as well. Oops. Let's see. I don't want to take sword or like wish claw. These other cards aren't as powerful. Crisis is interesting. Palancron's another combo piece. I think it's between Power Stone and Sower. So I like Worn Power Stone probably better overall. The upside of taking Sower, it's a blue card, and then it kind of like cuts blue more, and we just took Ancestral. So our pe essentially what I mean by when I say it cuts blue, the people to our left, I'm going to take Sower. But the people to our left, these people, well, they don't really see blue cards in the pack, so they're not taking blue cards. So it's going to force them into other colors. So by us taking more blue cards, it uh, like solidifies that more blue cards will come our way later in the draft. Uh, just drafting 101 basically and now I'm going to take Dak Baden. This card's insane in Vintage Cube. There's a lot of artifacts to gain control of. Looting is insane. This is just a really nice card. I would want Underground Sea. I think it's between those two cards. Not that close. Um, but Dak is just I think too powerful to uh, to pass up. So let's go Dak here. And interesting, interesting. <sighs> Nothing is jumping out at me. There's a Tezzeret the Seeker, which can be good in the right deck. There's a Lumbering Falls. There's a Garrick. Oath of Druids can be powerful as well. Mana Morphos. I'm honestly kind of leaning towards Garrick Relentless. Because we could be blue-green. We could be blue-red. We could be rug. We're going to be blue. We have this Ancestral. Um, could also just take Lumbering Falls. But... I think I like taking the Garrick over the Tezzeret here. I think it's more powerful. We don't have any artifacts yet. This is just not that strong of a card where Garrick I think is pretty strong. I don't really want to take Oath yet. Let's not go that deep. Let's check it Garrick and if we don't end up wanting it, that's fine. Alright, this is interesting now. Because, I, first of all, I don't really like Show and Tell. I think it's not very good. You often show and tell, even if you show and tell in like an Ulamog, it's often not good enough because then they put something in, they deal with your threat, and now they just get to attack with whatever they put in. That being said, um, the best card I think in the pack is Swords to Plowshares. Um, there's also Eternal Witness, goes on color with this Garrick. But you know, I'm just going to take the Plow over the Plateau as well. I'm going to take the Plow because now yeah you might be like well you just took a blue a red and then a green card now a white card but i actually like drafting like this because by taking this plow it just leaves us open to go into any color and if we don't end up playing plow dak or garrick it's totally fine we didn't lose that much by like leaving our options more open hmm now i'm gonna make an interesting pick here like i could take a golgari signet um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is take Deceiver Exarch. Uh, it's a blue card, uh, and it just we're taking it pretty early in the draft, where uh, if we like find the combo, it's just, our deck's just going to be sick with like Ancestral, Dak, Deceiver. That looks like the strongest pick to me, so let's go with Deceiver. All right. So now I can take Chain Lightning just as a removal spell. I don't think I want to take Mentor. I used to like Control Magic a ton, but I'm kind of liking it less and less, especially as the cube gets more powerful. Brainstorm, it's not that good. We don't even have any fetch lands yet. 
You know, I don't hate just taking a chain lightning as a removal spell. There's also Garrick Wild Speaker, which is strong if we end up being like Rug. Maybe that's the pick. I still think it's chain lightning. This just costs one mana. It's a good removal spell. Let's go with that. Keep our curve down. All right. Elspeth Knight Errant is a good one, but so is a braid. A braid is really, really strong in this cube. Removal spell plus shatter is just exactly where you want to be. And like again, if we like don't end up playing these two cards, that's totally fine. I don't think we lost out on too much by taking those. But I'm gonna take the abraid over the Elspeth Knight Errant here. I really like a braid. Hmm. Now we have an interesting choice of Ravine versus a Johnny versus, I guess, even Terramander. But we have this plow, and like it looks nice to take this a Johnny. Then we're just like a good like blue white red control deck and just get this Garrick out of here. Yeah, I like taking a Johnny over Thunderma as well. It's pretty cool. It's pretty easy. Glorybringer, but Firebolt seems great. Yeah, this is probably getting out of here. Green, we're not seeing like great green signals. Banefire versus Lava Mancer. I think I want Lava Mancer. Might not play it in the main deck. I think I want it over Sweltering Suns. Mm. Not sure how good Lava Mancer is. I think it's fine. We might not play it in the main. Alright, so I think this is Banishing Light versus Lightning Strike. I actually don't like Lightning Strike all that much. I'm not really happy to put that in my deck. Where Banishing Light, I'm fine. Don't really want to be a Hazret, or I don't think I want to Revel Arc, but I could see a world where we Wildfire. We're not... I mean, Mono Red does seem pretty open, but um, I, don't think it, I don't think it matters here. I don't think that's what we're doing with this ancestor. I guess we could have like potentially taken the uh, searing blaze and then just been like mono red, kind of like playing like DAC and ancestral. But I like just being like a stronger like control deck with playing these as like removal spells rather than trying to burn them out. I mean, this deck is looking really strong right now. Ooh, there's a lot of good cards here. We have Ancient Grudge. We have Chrome Mox. We even have Gear Hulk. We have Botanical Sanctum, Sylvan Library, Rabble Master. I don't think it's Rabble Master. I know we already have the, the Abrade, but Ancient Grudge is great. Hmm. Wonder if I want Chrome Mox. Even though it's a even though it's a bad Mox, it's still a Mox. And you need to be fast in this in this format when other people have moxes and black lotuses and stuff. I just not sure. I don't think it's Torrential Gear Hulk. I think it's kind of between Grudge and Chrome Mox, honestly. Grudge is so good, but we don't have any lands yet. I'm gonna take the Chrome Mox. I think this deck wants it. We have like some card advantage stuff. Okay, now I think I have to take a Polluted Delta, because then any, like, blue, like, duel, or, like, let's say we get, like, a black-white duel, then we can just play it, and then Polluted Delta basically can find us white or blue at that point, so it becomes a dual land, so this just helps, fetch lands are just so good, you just have to take them pretty high, I think. Frantic Search, yeah, we might play that, but definitely gonna slam Delta here. I like this, because the... The draft is going pretty quick, so it makes it much more enjoyable to draft when, when it's going quick like this. Alright, um, I think this is a pretty easy pick for me. I'm going to take Miscalculation. Other possible options would be like Burst Lightning, I guess Avalanche Riders, Port, Legionnaire, but yeah, it's an easy miscalc. I'm going to take it over Scarab God as well. I'm not trying to go down the Scarab God route. So exactly, so... Blood Crypt, if we took this, then Polluted Delta would get blue or red, so that would help our mana. But I guess I could have taken Scarab God instead of Miscock, but I'm still fine with that pick. I think I'm just going to take Inferno Titan. Just hold out for, just wait on the land. 
in this case, just because Inferno Titan is a really strong uh, six drop. Let's go with it. Ooh, Spire Bluff, Gitaxian Probe. Even Dreadhorde Arcanist seems sick in this deck. Ancestral, Plow, Chain Lightning. Hmm, that's tough. I mean, I need to take the land, but hopefully this Arcanist comes back. Hopefully nobody else really wants it. It's possible. Red is really open. So, let's see. Is there going to be seven other cards people are going to take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's definitely possible. I'm going to take the land, though. I need, I need the fixing now. All right, it's an easy colonnade. Let's let's continue with the fixing. Rekindling Phoenix is fine, but uh, it's not like a a must have for us at this point. It's an easy uh easy colonnade over Hero over Phoenix. White seems to be our least played color at the moment as well. Okay, there's a Lingering Souls, which we have a Delta to help us splash as well. Um, there's also just Lightning Helix. Hmm. Lingering Souls does seem pretty strong. This is actually a cool inclusion in the cube. I like that. I don't think I'm going to take it here. I already have the Abrade, but this seems strong, actually. Destroy Target Artifact for one is is just like playable in this cube. And then you also get to get the 2-1. one. could also take Windswept Teeth, the same reason I took Delta. Souls? Is that just so greedy to take Souls? I'm going to do it, because if we get that like Black Land back or any other Black Land, it's just so good. Wow, we're just seeing all the artifact and enchantment destruction coming around. I think I'm going to take Disenchant and play it over Baneslay and just play a Braid plus Disenchant. So I'm happy, obviously, not taking the Shieldbreaker here because we're just getting a Disenchant. I don't want top. Don't really want Incinerate. Same reason I don't want uh, the other 2 mana, 3 damage spell. So let's just take Disenchant. Fetters, it's a fine playable. I don't really want Brightwing or Gush. Just take Fetters. Pia's fine, but we don't really have any other artifacts to use. I guess I could take Recruiter in case we end up hitting the combo. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, we got this Unexpectedly Absent as well. I might play that. I like Unexpectedly Absent a lot, actually. Burst Lightning, that's a fine playable. I can have this in the board for now. Not really a huge land tax fan. Just gonna Thalia. I, I don't know. I guess I don't need to Thalia at all. Nice. Got the Arcanist. Nice. We wield it. That's huge. Um, Day actually seems good in this deck. Because we don't really have creatures yet. The way we win right now is like Inferno Titan, Ajani, Dak, just value. We do need to pick up another win con or two. But this deck is looking sweet. It would really help to pick up the combo because we're pretty controlling. We have good card advantage. We have good removal. Um, so if we like have a combo finish with just like we play this controlling. Wow, we got the helix back last pick. This draft is like going really well, I think. We're not really getting the power, like the power nine, but our cards are all really strong. All right. Um... I do really like balance. Um, I've seen balance like wheel. I've gotten balance like 10th pick, like probably even later, honestly. Um, but I'm going to take, oh, I was going to say I'm going to take trop, but maybe I'm not because uh, for some reason I was thinking this was a, a, a blue white or blue red. I'm not, I'm not sure what I was thinking, but I was thinking I really want to take that. Maybe I do just take balance. Balance does get you out of some bad situations, but. The problem is, I don't have any artifacts except Chrome Rocks. Sometimes just like balance gets you out of a situation where nothing else will. Could take a Signet. Could take a Charter Course. Could still take Trop or Taiga, but I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to take the balance. Just make sure I get it. I, th I just think it's really strong. It's too good to not pass up. All right. Oh, there's the twin. I saw the factor fiction. I was like, all right, we'll take factor fiction, but we're definitely slamming twin. And now we have our win con. 
Nice. So now seeing twin, I'm happy with the obviously taking deceiver. This uh, makes our controlling deck look a lot, lot better. All right. Thousand Year Storm. I don't like that. I do love a Mystic Confluence, though. I'm going to take that over Siege Gang and Wall of Omens and whatever else. It's an easy Mystic Confluence for me. Wow. Stoneforge Mystic. I always just see this going around. Like, when I see a Batter Skull, I often, like, and I like, think I'm going to potentially be white, I often just take the Batter Skull knowing that, like, I just see Stoneforge so often. People just don't like to play it in Vintage Cube, but when you just take a Batter Skull and then take the Stoneforge, it's so strong. I, mean, I could even take Stoneforge over Juice Bowen here, just on the fact that if I get one equipment, Stoneforge is like pretty strong. But I think Jace Bellerin's pretty strong too. And this is like, we're at the point where it's pretty late in the draft, where we're likely not going to see good equipment. And we don't really have creatures. So yeah, I'm going to take the uh, the Jace here over like Basalt, Monolith, Stoneforge, whatever else. Just take the Jace. Well, my first uh, instinct was getting Jura, but I'm going to take Fire Confluence. This is insane for the same reason that uh, like a braid is insane because destroy target artifact is really good in this cube and the other modes are good in this cube as well. Just so, so this is a really really strong card for the cube. We're like really nicely set up against artifacts here. All right. Well, there's a wheel of fortune. I mean, that actually seems strong in this deck just because we have the combo and we have so much removal so we can do some pretty nice stuff i think we can also just like if they tap out then we can just wheel and then combo potentially hmm. could just elash is still strong Uga and i just don't think we can really realistically get up to that much mana don't really want to take win uh, winds of abandon here so i'll just take wheel Is it Signet? Needle Spires? Chandra? It's actually tough. I'm kind of leaning towards just taking the land because we're not really going to be wanting to tap out for Signet on turn two in this deck. We're most likely just going to be wanting to like playing these two mana spells and then just play like one drop, two drop, three drop. We're not really just trying to go from like two to four in this deck as much. So I think I'm going to take Needle Spires just because we need the fixing. Yeah, I definitely want Chandra, but we are already loaded on good fours. Going to have to cut some already, so I'm just going to Needle Spires. All right, I like Mana Tithe probably too much. Duretti is interesting as well. We just don't have artifacts to use for it. Man, Wear Terror. I just don't think we need any more artifact destruction. I think I'd just take Mana Tithe and, and play it. I don't really want Repeal either, but I'm a big Mana Tithe fan. Let's go. So Lesnia saying that don't really want to take Inkwell, hoping to like wheel some type of combo with it. Probably not even playing Lesnia saying it though. I'm not playing any of these cards, I don't think. Just going to take this. I don't know why. Just going to take it. O-Ring, sure. Might play that actually. This Lingering Soul is probably not getting in there. Don't want either of these. Just take a Siege Gang. Condemn. I could play that, actually. Wow. Gideon versus Wrath versus Direfleet. I think I want the Gideon. Wow. We're just, we have so many playables here. This is going to be like, we're going to have to cut cards for sure. This might be like the most playables I've like ever had pretty much just wow we can even dark dwellers if we want i don't think we want to i think our other cards are just stronger can probably cut the day just because we have so much removal could even cut balance this, even though i like first picked it um just because if like we play against a deck that have a, have like artifacts and they just play out a couple artifacts then our balance is not going to be good and we don't have any artifacts except Chromox. I am a huge fan of balance, but this is a situation where I can see being right to cut it. So yeah, we definitely need to cut a lot more cards. 
could just cut like a chain lightning. Let's get this wind of abandon out of there. Our other removal spells, like again, I think are better. Vanishing light o-ring. Maybe even cut sower. It's a little more vulnerable. Cut face fetters. Cut these four drops. I think these ones are better. I'm gonna actually cut wheel of fortune just because we're not really like we don't have a lot of like zero mana stuff like to really go off with this. Um, I think this is right. So if I play 12 lands, that's 16 land Chromox. Probably need to cut one more card. I kind of like playing both of these Oblivion Ring effects. I want to play Mystic Confluence. I think I want to play Gideon. I want to play Disenchant, Abrade. I could just cut Mana Tithe. It's nice just having both of these. Just, just have... We're just like basically a control deck with some planeswalkers and the combo. I'm just gonna cut the mana tithe. It is worse in uh, Vintage Cube just because people have extra mana lying around from Moxes and stuff more often. All right, let's sort by color. Pretty, pretty, uh, just solid like blue, white, and red. We need like. Basically all sources equal. You probably need red and white a little bit more than blue. Um, definitely going to play the Chromox. Just try to speed up a little bit. Our mana's... I mean, this only gets... This isn't even good. I guess it can shuffle. It only. It's basically just an island, though. I'm trying to think if there's any reason in this list that we want to play the Delta. I mean, it can be good against stuff like if they Jace Batesy us, and then we can shuffle. And it thins our deck. I just, I guess we just don't even want it. We just didn't see the right duels for it, I don't think. We did see the one Blood Crypt, but we took something else over it. So our mana's not going to be great. 4-4-6. Four, four, so that's... Six, seven, eight red sources, six blue sources, and six white sources. That's pretty awful. That's just like garbage mana. Maybe I do this, and then I have seven, seven, six. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Our mana's basically trash, but um, the deck seems powerful. So if we don't get like color screwed, I think we're looking good. So let's do this. I recommend this to everyone. Just take a screenshot of your deck. It helps you more than you would think. And let's run it. All right, welcome to round one. This is unfortunately a million. We have the Ancestral, we can Firebolt, but we, we just have one red land. It's just not gonna be enough. Let's mullion. All right, this is gonna be a keep. We got the removal spit. Uh, removal spells into a Johnny plan here. Let's just put back a land because we'll draw an island, right? <laughs> Preordain. It's a strong card. Against Plampkin. He goes bottom, bottom. Okay, he's probably looking for lands. Double blue card. Not ideal. Just going to F6, not going to rep force or anything. Inquisition. Take our braid or chain lightning, sure. Okay. Not gonna play the island just because that would give him more information. Can play island next turn. Ashiok. Well, that's gonna be tough. We don't have many creatures for him to hit, but. Oh, he hit, our, he hit part of our combo, so we can't win with the combo this game. That's going to be just hard to beat. We have to draw Banishing Light or something. All right, Dak is good. Let's play Dak plus... All right, Plow is actually good. I think we don't want to Braid, considering he's blue-black, hasn't played an artifact yet. And maybe Mountain. All right. The problem is if we just like keep dacking and getting Ashiok, we're getting milled essentially five per turn, three, four, five, and drawing a card. So that puts a pretty quick clock on us just to get milled. 
We don't have many creatures for him to put in with Ashiok, but we're going to have to find a Banishing Light and, re and resolve it. Tap land, go. Okay, let's find Banishing Light here. We have two of them in our deck. O-Ring and Banishing Light. Deceiver. Okay, that's not very good. Let's loot. Firebolt. Because going Firebolt on Ashiok, going Deceiver, and then Flashback, Fire, that's just not good. But I am going to discard Firebolt plus Plow, I think. Because then I keep five lands to be able to Mystic Confluence. I can just slam a Johnny this turn. I could discard Deceiver actually over Plow. Yeah, that's, that's the play. Let's go with that. And then he knows about this Plains. And then let's just slam this. Hopefully it doesn't get countered. Just going to keep his Watery Grave tapped. And then pass the turn. Still looking for Banishing Light or O-Ring for Ashiok. Down to 20 cards in Library. Now 17. Unexpected absent. That's I guess that was another answer. Oh, and he has Inferno Titan under there. So he can just put Inferno Titan onto the battlefield. We can't counter that, but then we can bounce it back to our own hand. So that's interesting. Start by looting. Man, we're just we're just really not finding uh we're not finding uh the O ring or banishing light. We've gone through over half our deck and we have two of those effects. I could Helix the uh, Ashiok with the Ajani. So if he wants to put in Inferno Titan, then he uh, has to kill his own Ashiok. He's probably just going to plus Ashiok in that instance, though. So I think I'd rather just keep his Water Grave tapped, honestly. Okay, let's Island plus. And then if he wants to put in Inferno Titan, that's fine, because I can bounce it back to my hand and then play it. Or I can just plow it as well. I can ult Dak if I want. Then I can Firebolt something, gain control of it. So this is actually interesting here. Wow. So I can go ult Dak, Firebolt, target Ashiok, and gain control of Ashiok. And if he doesn't stop Dak, he can't, he can't stop that. You know what, so I think I just Mystic Confluence counter, unless they pay 3, draw 2 right here. And then I plan on ulting Dak, Firebolting, Ashiok, gain control of Ashiok. And then I can either just start plusing Ashiok, I can minus, and put an Inferno Titan in. Yeah, this seems insane. So let's do this. Counter it, and draw 2. If he counters back, it's actually fine. Because then we get to do our play of ulting Dak and stealing Ashiok and stuff. So we can definitely find a way to win here without our combo. Ashiok is a scary one. This card's great in cube. Alright, there's our O-Ring, but... I like our line of ulting Dak. We don't need to loot anymore. Yeah, let's do it. So let's go... Alt Dak. Whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, gain control of it. And now let's go. Do I want to leave up Plow? Or play a Colonnade? Um, I don't think I need to leave up Plow right now. So let's just go Firebolt Ashiok. Because if he counters this, it doesn't matter. We still gain control of Ashiok. So that's that's pretty nice. Firebolt still resolves, so Ashiok goes down to 9. So I can start plussing the Ashiok now. Or I can just minus and put an Inferno Titan into play. Which I feel like that has to be better. Minus 6. Put Inferno Titan into play. 
but then play a Colonnade and pass the turn. Not going to play Chrome Muffs right now. Then plus a Johnny, target Watery Grave. Put Inferno Titan in. 3U. We sack a creature. Okay. Keep that tapped. Play a colonnade. Pass the turn. Let's see. Scarab God. Okay, we can O ring that. So that's fine. So let's see. I think we start by plusing Ashiok, right? I guess we could minus Ashiok again, get Dreadhorde Arcanist. But then we can't, we can only flashback Chainlight. Yeah, let's just plus Ashiok. Plus Ashiok, target you. So control magic, spell pierce, Snapcaster Mage. That's a, Snapcaster is a great one. Because I can put Snapcaster in, flash something back and gain control of it. Okay, let's go. O ring the scarab god. I'm at seven cards in library, but I still think I want to play G's. Play G's. I'm gonna plus. I'm gonna minus target myself. Go down to six cards. We're fine because we can just ult a Johnny here, kill all of his lands, and then uh, find some way to win with six cards left. I think we're fine. Ooh, pack rat. He only has one card though, so he can make one rat. Um, I feel like I'm just not even gonna plow it this second. Okay. Draw to five cards. It's ult a Johnny. He can make a pack rat right here if he wants. Then we can just kill both of his pack rats. Yeah. Nice. That was a pretty cool game. We were able to beat an Ashiok in a pretty awesome fashion of DAC emblem, gain control of Ashiok. So that was awesome. We're against like blue black mid range, kind of blue black control. So it's it is gonna be hard to get the combo off versus him. So we saw a pack rat, we saw like Snapcaster, we saw counter spells. What if I go deep and bring in like Lingering Souls plus Polluted Delta and play a Swamp? Lingering Souls does seem pretty insane against him. You know what? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do it. We didn't really see like. I think I can take out Disenchant. A Braid. He has some targets for a Braid, but could take that out as well. Just Maybe just leave in the Fiery Confluence. Take these out. And then, since I brought in... I have 18 lands right now. I could cut an Island, because I just brought in an Island, essentially, and play a Swamp. That gives you two black sources for Lingering Souls. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. I just want the Lingering Souls because he has like Liliana's Triumph and like other removal spells, and I think a card like Lingering Souls is really where I want to be. Uh, I'm going to mulligan this hand. Just one land. Uh, this is not good. I'm going to keep though. Just put back an Inferno Titan. Could have put back a burst lightning, but just we have three lands. We have to just. I don't want to go down to five. Unexpectedly absent, actually a good draw. I can slow him down a lot. All right. Doesn't have the pack rat. Just gonna play island there. Make it look like we have a counter spell. Impulse is fine. Watery Grave tapped. Probably passes a turn. He does. 
could have played planes there for unexpectedly absent, but I think playing the island is, is scarier from the opponent's from our opponent's perspective, so I like playing the island. It's unlikely that we were gonna need to unexpectedly absent on T two. Lands. Okay. Now we really need to draw land. Because if we're just both sitting here and he's playing lands and we're not, it's awful for us. Hopefully he just taps out for like a scarab god. Nope. Not gonna play any spells. It's not good for us. Land. Okay. It's definitely not ideal. We can't even play like our instant. Just Mystic Confluence draw three. Sure. This card is really nice. There's a pack rat. Okay. Can't burst lightning because we don't have red. Like Deceiver Exarch. Just gonna pass the turn. I'm not gonna just run out Deceiver. So he's making a token. So I could do an interesting line here. I can let the token, the ability resolve, and then I can play Deceiver, untap one of my own lands, and unexpectedly absent the token to just kill it. Um, that gets my Deceiver into play, it makes me not have to discard. You know, I like it. I'm gonna do it, so now I'm gonna play Deceiver untap a planes and then unexpectedly absent the token copy which just puts it back on top but then it just ceases to exist so we essentially kill one of the pack rats so that slows them down a lot i don't know what one mana counter he could have if he has like a one mana removal spell for this um that's fine Because we're so far away from comboing here. I'm just trying to get value and not discard. Opponent's like deep in the tank. Untap target permanent I control. Untap a planes. I think I'm just going to unexpectedly absent this now. So I don't get countered. Yeah, dismember. So I figured he did have a one mana removal spell. Which is fine. We don't really care about the Deceiver this game. You know, we just unexpectedly absent this, kill it. And he can activate Packrat twice on his turn, but if that's like his game plan, we may just be able to beat that. I think we also still have the Day of Judgment in our deck. Inquisition, sure. I guess we could have just played a Banishing Light on our turn, but that doesn't seem ideal kind of i still like the line we took so he can make two more rats here looks like he's gonna opt to not do that interesting okay so this is actually good because i'm just gonna go land and i'm gonna go chain lightning the pack rat he can make two rats but that that still kills this one and then we can kill another rat so we can just start like fighting his rats basically but i cannot burst lightning oh no i guess i could I could burst lightning at, and then if he makes two rats, that frees me up to just O-ring one of them and it kills two, but I just like using the sorcery chain lightning now. Save our instant burst lightning. So he's making a copy. Sure. Then I'm just going to banishing light. Banishing light this pack rat gonna make another copy or just counter this now it looks like he's just making a copy so he's like keeping pack rat around but this is actually favoring us i think because his pack rat's still just a one one right now and it's just buying us time to find like our powerful planeswalkers and he's running out of cards he's discarding these good these good cards to make more rats and that's fine. That's like ideal for us, basically. So now I'm going to go... I'm going to lead on just O-Ring, I think. We have this Mystic Confluence to hopefully refuel as well. We have Ancestral in our deck. 
four mana. Oh, cryptic counter draw. That's bad for us. Just burst lightning this now. Then he makes a rat. Has to discard. Okay, he just had a land. So that's not ideal. But we're, we're fighting through these rats. We have Mystic Confluence as well to bounce a couple rats. If you can't counter this Mystic Confluence, it's looking like we're going to be fine. Scarab God? Oh, Mole Drifter? Ugh. Oh, and another land to make another copy. So now my plan is going to be to wait. Hopefully end of turn. He'll try to make a rat, and then that's when we can Mystic Confluence bounce both rats. And then kill his pack rats once and for all. So I just pass. Act like I have nothing. Hopefully he just forgot I have this. See if he makes that token here. He does not. So that's not good for us either. So I'm just going to take three. I think I need to go... Bounce, bounce, draw, draw here. I know he can make more rats in response, but um, I need to, I need to do something. I feel like this is just gonna get countered anyway. Gear Hulk Cryptic, or Gear Hulk Mystic Confluence. Yeah, it's gonna be bad for us. Why don't he Mystic Confluence? Maybe he's just saving that. Counter draw, okay. So if we draw a Wrath here. The Johnny. <sighs> so we can make another rat. I could cycle looking for Wrath because we're pretty far behind. I think I just go a Johnny Helix the Rat. Over helixing the mole drifter. Um, yeah, helix the rat. He'll probably just make another rat. I'm gonna plan on cycling miscalculator, looking for wrath. All right, let's get the stop on our end step out of there for now. This is a good game though. I mean, our draw wasn't good. We mulligan to triple planes and just like not really the the do nothing hand, just not exactly where we want to be. Gaunty, our opponent's deck is is just like a solid deck as well. He's just attacking it with Moldrifter. That's it's pretty aggressive because if we had a removal spell for Moldrifter, that wouldn't be ideal for him. Let's cycle this. Try to find Wrath. Okay, there's Ancestral. Playing a spell on our upkeep? That doesn't make sense to me if he is. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Let's lead on Ancestral. I feel like he has to have a counter spell here. What does he have? Like a spell pierce? Snapcaster Mystic Confluence. Makes us counter unless we pay 6 maybe. We're at 11, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, this is not looking good. So he's going to counter unless we pay 6 draw card. Yep. No, no, and then just play Arcanist, pass the turn, hopefully, I don't think we're dying, so if he makes two more rats, he can hit for three, eight, nine, ten, because we can block Snat, so I guess he could make three rats and kill us, so we're dead on board, Murderous Rider, All right, yeah, literally dead. See if he uh, goes for it though. Yeah, he's going for it. 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright. We're dead. I'm trying to concede here. Lag. Alright, that was a good game.
this is a this is a cool matchup. Um, I think I like the way I sideboarded to get out a lot of the artifact and enchantment hate. Oh, I sided out day. Still, even though the pack rat killed us, I still think I want to side day out. Mana tithe could be an interesting one as well. But I think I like just running it. Running it like this. Could also side out Fiery Confluence. But uh, I'll keep it. We're on the play. Do we have a decent 7? Suppose this qualifies as decent. We just need a blue source. And then this hand's good. Just go mount and go. Dotsies, probably take our deck would be my guess. Yeah, we just snapped off the deck. Okay, just leave up Helix. Now this hand's not looking good. Our mana, again, is pretty rough, so this is what we signed up for. All right, Fire Confluence. I don't think we can really just start going for the burn your face plan. Although, we, we could. We could just helix him right here down to 15, then six him down to nine, and chain lightning him down to six. But I'm not going to do that. All right, there's island. Not going to fiery confluence here. Going to play colonnade. Pass. Five mana play a Liliana. So he's just going to plus the Liliana. Okay. It's actually fine with me because now I can just Helix it, untap, and kill it. And I can even Mystic Confluence, bounce the token, draw some cards. So this is actually kind of ideal. So I go Helix, your Liliana, and untap, plow. I can also, if I want, I could save my cards, and I could go just swing colonnade at Liliana, like kill the zombie or not. Um, is it better to resolve Mystic Confluence? Bouncing this, drawing two cards. I think. I think that's better than trying to leave up Mystic Confluence on a later turn. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's play land. Let's go bounce, draw, draw. Leave up a red for Chain Lightning, Liliana. Oops. Oh, there's an ancestral. That's really nice. Chain lightning that past the turn. Now we just have to resolve this ancestral. Scarab God? Okay, we got the plow. Got the plow for the Scarab God. Let's just lead on that because I'd rather encounter the plow than counter the ancestral. Alright, he's F6. And now we get to go. Another red source, Dreadhorde Arcanist, and now he has to answer this right here, or he's in a lot of trouble because we get to go attack Flashback Ancestral if he can't answer the Dreadhorde Arcanist. I mean, he probably can. He's blue black control with a million mana and four cards, but control magic. Okay, well, we can Inferno Titan, kill that. Nighthawk, sure. So, kind of like just resolving Inferno Titan here, killing Arcanist, because he could flash back Thoughtseize with it, and then just not caring about this, because if I if he can't kill Inferno Titan, then I can just attack and kill Nighthawk with the Inferno Titan trigger. My other option is just to Fire Confluence, do a 3 damage to each creature, and Wrath is bored. But I like the Inferno Titan line. Inferno Titan, kill Arcanist. He's like F6ing every turn, so it looks like he doesn't have 
much to do. I could have gone like Deceiver Exarch on Tapa Land and then play Inferno Titan to play around specifically uh, the Edict effect. But I like saving this because we can still combo him. Alright, Gaunty. That's fine. Fortunately, both of these have Death Touch. But now I could go Wrath. I could do 3 damage to each creature. I could attack for a million. So he exiled a card from our library so he can cast this card. Attacking for 2. Wow, that's actually an aggressive attack. Because now I can go attack Bolt the Gaunty. I mean, I think I want to activate Colonnade as well. So let's do it. Yeah, activate Colonnade. Swim with both. Trigger. Kill this Gaunty. He shouldn't have attacked with Nighthawk. just not gonna not gonna pump for one and then I'm gonna pass the turn I leave up deceiver so now if he doesn't attack I can tap down his blocker and kill him it's looking like we're in a good spot here this has been a great match looks like he's a little flooded over there I mean so are we Snapcaster Thoughtseize. All right. Oops. He has zero cards in hand. So I'm just going to put Deceiver Exarch into play here. I'm probably tapping Snapcaster Mage because I can just Inferno Titan kill the Nighthawk. Because if I don't play Deceiver, he can just take that. Yeah, I'm just going to play it. Just, I'd rather him take Confluence here. So I'm just going to play Deceiver, tap Snapcaster, and yeah, he concedes to playing Deceiver. Nice! We weren't drawing anything, but I think we just had the win with, with what we had. Because I Deceiver, tap Snap, and then I can go attack, shoot this. Or I guess I could even just tap Nighthawk, shoot this for 1, shoot him for 2 down to 12, and then hit for enough damage. So I had lethal on board and he had zero cards going down to 13. Yeah. So we had the win on board. Um, so nice. Got the first one and I'll see you in round two. All right. One and oh with this sick uh, blue, white, red control kind of exploding a twin combo deck. We keep drawing these one land hands. Got them all. I think we've mulliganed every game. Um, I have to keep this hand because any land that I can cast Dak and just totally get out of this. So I'm going to put back this double white card and then just go island go. So we just need to hit a land. We're against Juddy 3000. Maybe Judy. Figure. Okay. All right. Well, Colonnade's fine. I mean, we have tons of removal, so this matchup should be really good for us. If he like, plays any artifact that's so ideal, we can just Dax steal it, and then hopefully T4 or Johnny kill something. Oh, okay, it's not Mono White. Wow, Figure of Destiny, Trop. Soul Ring, perfect. Trinket Mage for Black Lotus. <laughs> Mox Jet. Definitely going to go Dax steal Soul Ring. I mean, this is an insane start here. It's interesting that he's playing figure in the deck, but don't know if I can fault him. I'm just going to go Dak, steal Soul Ring. He can kill Dak. It's fine. I want the mana. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can go Disenchant plus a Johnny because we have the Soul Ring. 
I think he said that damn thief. Oh well. I told him Dak pretty good. I value this card very highly in Vintage Cube. It's just really strong. But I like to see like when my opponents are just having fun, not not getting salty. It's definitely how I, how I play Magic. I, I rarely, rarely get tilted. I, the only time I do is when I make really egregious mistakes. But I never get tilted on what my opponent does. Ever. Alright, there's a Solemn. I mean, we get to have a pretty insane turn here. Oh, we actually can't play both of these because we only have one white source. Oh, never mind. So, we go Plains. Disenchant the Mox. And then I guess just like, we can Helix something. We can go a Johnny plus, like target Trinket Mage. But I think I'd rather just Helix the Trinket Mage. I mean, I guess I could Helix the figure as well. This can become a 4-4. Four, four. Then he just has two 2-2s two out that we can contend with. Yeah, I'm just going to Helix the figure, actually. It's likely going to hit for 2 next turn anyway. Maybe for 4. So I'd rather just deal with the figure. He's got triple white. It looks like he's white splashing stuff. And we have like tons of good draws now. We have a lot of mana. We we have this colonnade that we can use to block with. So, ooh, port. He can tap our colonnade down. All right, kills a Johnny, hits us for two. But I like our position here. Tap our red source, sure. Chain lightning. So I could just play a red source, chain lightning, the trinket mage. That's what I'm gonna do. Just leave his solemn around. We can't activate colonnade. Only have four mana. Just pass the turn. Drawing deceiver would be nice, but. Also just drawing like Inferno Titan, Ancestral, just like all our good cards basically. Our opponent not really doing much, you can tap our Colonnade here. Okay. Ooh, wow. Yeah, tapping the Colonnade was good. Pass the turn. Port is a really strong card. I think that's an undervalued card as well. Water Grave. Planes, 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 water grave, drop. Okay. Our opponent beating us down with the Solemn. Copter. It's actually a good one. And still use port here. Alright, nothing we can do. Wow, just getting wrecked by port. Good news is now if we draw planes or island, we're in good shape. I think we have three of one and four of the other. Okay. Woodstone, you can crew copter hit for five, so we're in trouble here. Definitely in trouble. He gets to loot with Copter. Copter is pretty strong. Draw a discard. Discard a land. Yeah. That port is just like one in this game because we haven't been able to play these spells. So Fiery Confluence or Island or Plains. Not needle spires. <laughs> okay. So I can play Gideon plus, but I think I need to Gideon minus kill the lodestone golem. Gideon. Because if I just Gideon plus, it just dies. 
So I need to kill this. Pass the turn. Also, if we just survive and draw the combo, we can win that way. All right, so he just looks to be just like kind of like three color. He might not even be green. He might just be like Esper playing figure for some reason. Flicker with target recruiter if he wants. He can also flicker one of his own lands and then still use port. So attack Gideon, kill it. All right, he gets to loot. Loot away a land, it's pretty good. Is he gonna play Flicker Wisp? He should. Flicker like a planes and then use port again. Ooh, Regisar. Inferno Titan. Okay, so he has a Flicker Wisp in hand. So if I just go Inferno Titan, then he just goes Flicker Wisp it kill you? Or no, he can't quite kill us. Because I can just go play Inferno Titan, kill Recruiter, and Solemn. And then if he goes Flicker Wisp, bounce Inferno, he can only hit for, or no, then he can hit for 10. Ah, oh, brutal. Because you can go Flicker Wisp, use Flicker Wisp to Crew Copter. Uh. So, I mean, I don't like just playing um, Inferno Titan because then we're literally, we just are dead. Play Flicker Wisp, bounce, or Flicker, Inferno Titan until end of turn, Crew Copter, hit for 10, kill us. So, we have to just play Jace. Draw a card. Uh, we don't have triple blue for Ancestral, and we can't even uh, play Inferno Titan now. I'll just concede. We're dead. Okay. I don't think we want a sideboard. I think we're pretty well set up in the matchup. Um, yeah, let's just run it back. We just have like all this early removal that we didn't really see, and Copter shouldn't be a problem. We have a Braid, Disenchant, Fiery Confluence. We have a lot of removal for it. Um, plus, we have removal for his small guys. So, as long as our hands are functional, like this hand looks good. Especially if we draw any land, any lands is is good for this hand. Or like red white control here. Arcanist is sweet in this deck. We have a lot of cool stuff to flash back. Does he have the one drop? Looks like no. I'm just gonna play Arcanist. That allows us next turn if we want, we can go Firebolt and then flashback Firebolt. Looks like this Arcanist might be dying now. Or he's getting like soul ring here, more likely. So now if we just draw a land, we can just O ring the soul ring though. Oh, Tide Hollow? That's totally fine. Because <laughs> we have two removal spells we can cast for it, plus two more removal spells, well, three more removal spells. Hands just five removal spells, zero lands. All five of these cards kill Tide Hollow, so I'm not too worried. I wonder what he vamped for, if it was Tide Hollow or something else, maybe a land. Alright. I'm gonna just go Helix this now. And then play Needle Spires, attack for one. Can't flash back Helix. But drawing the land was huge there, because now we have access to both of these O-ring effects. Plus we can go Firebolt something, flash, flash it back with Arcanist for value. 
so now the problem is if we draw blue cards, we keep casting them. If we draw islands, it's not great either. But we still have powerful cards in hand we can cast for now. So drawing islands is actually kind of where we want to be because then that opens up ourselves up to draw blue cards. All right, he plays Thalia. Which is totally fine. I think I'm just gonna firebolt it and then not even flash it back with Arcanist. So I'm just gonna go firebolt Thalia and then just attack for one, not flashback firebolt. I'd rather just save it in the yard because even if he kills Arcanist, we can just flash this back for five. You may, yeah, we're gonna choose no. Feels weird to not get the value, but we can always just get the value later. No reason just to bolt him for two, I don't think. Especially when we can just essentially hard cast this on the flashback. Armageddon. Alright. Let's go, Arcanist. <laughs> we want to draw uh, Island into Ancestral, the next two draws. In either order, it doesn't really matter. Does he not have a land? Oh, he does have a land. Soul Ring, yeah, that's what he vamped for. Alright, now Plains is a good draw too. But it's going to be tough to beat that 3 mana. No. If we draw Plains, we have a lot of plows, because we can go plow something and then flash it back. Opponent with 2 cards in hand. If he goes land, Solemn, that's brutal. Land a Lodestone. Alright, Spire Bluff. So I can go flashback Firebolt, but then he just doesn't block. So I need to draw a planes basically. I don't have that many planes left. So Armageddon looks like it may get us here. Let's see. Copter. Okay. Copter is obviously pretty insane. So this is where we need to draw planes. If we do, I think we're going to win. Planes. Okay, I can't I can't even flip one right now. Jace, that's definitely not planes. Just attack for one. No. Cuz I can't even flash it back. Because now it's probably too late even to draw planes. Because if he can still tap our Spire Bluff during our upkeep. Armageddon just gets you sometimes. Our draw was close to getting there, just not quite. Nothing. There's no way for us to play around the Armageddon. We just didn't have the lands. This gets tapped. We're not dead yet. Planes. Okay, okay. I think we have a good chance to win still now. I'm going to say no because we can't even pay. So now we just wait and then on our next upkeep he's going to tap Spire Bluff. And then that's when we can just plow Lodestone. And then we're going to be able to flash back plow. Adanto, okay, that can be plowed too. He does get to crew copter hit us for eight here. So that's rough. But we get to go plow, lodestone, attack, flashback, plow on Adanto, leave him with nothing. So I think we, again, I think we're okay. I really think we have a chance to win this game here. So wait, he's going to use port, then I plow the lodestone. Might have got there just in time, let's see. Okay, and then I get to go attack, flashback, plow on a Donto. Nice, drew land too. That is huge. Can't flashback the firebolt because this can gain indestructible, so I have to use the plow. Plow this. 
pass the turn. If he doesn't have a creature, he can't even hit us for three. And even if he can, we ha we can flash back a firebolt off the Arcanist and play an O-ring. Land. Gideon. Okay, so he can hit us for three. And we can't... So we need to draw a land to be able to O-ring this because he can port us. You can give it lifelink. No vigilance. Okay. So I think we need to draw a land to get out of this now. He can loot a card away. He chooses to not. Alright. Any land. I guess any land, and he has to not draw a creature. <laughs> land. Okay, so we tapped something. Okay. Land. Nice. Okay. So this is interesting. I'm gonna go I'm obviously gonna go land. But if I go land O ring Gideon. The problem is, if he draws a creature, Copter kills us. But if I go land, O-ring, Copter, then if he draws a removal spell, we die. So it's between removal spell versus drawing a creature. I think he's more likely to draw a creature. Therefore, I need to go O-ring, target Smuggler's Copter. Because this doesn't have Trample, so I can chump it with Dreadheart Arcanist. So I just banishing like this. Yeah, any creature kills me. All right. Banishing at light copter, pass the turn, no attack. Plan on jumping to Gideon. Banishing light copter. Pass. This is another great game. We're like hanging on by the skin of our teeth here. Now we need to draw I guess we don't need to draw another land because I'm just probably casting another O-ring next turn. Indestructible, attack, we chump. And we need him to not draw another creature here. No. Nice, he does not. He taps down probably our, call, uh, our Spire Bluff. Okay. That's right. Nice, we draw Island. So now we just go... Island, O-Ring, hit the Gideon, and now we're in good shape. We can even cast Jace next turn no matter what. So are we stabilizing here at 2? Any land will allow us to cast Gideon as well, because it's not going to type down one of these white sources, I don't believe. Fairgrounds Warden, no target. Tap down Spire Bluff. No reason to float mana. Disenchant. Now the question is do I go Jace? Minus to draw a card because if I hit land, it's so much better because then I can go play land, kill soul ring, or I can just go disenchant soul ring now. I think I'm going to go for the Jace line because he also might try to attack us. Um, so I think I tap like this. I draw a card, land. Nice. Now he has a tough choice between attacking us with Fairgrounds Warden or attacking the Jace. I think he's probably going to choose us, which I think is usually wrong. Attacking us. Yeah, I think that's wrong. You want to hit the Jace, because now it just gives him more outs. He doesn't know I have, like, outs in hand, basically, but um, I get, just get to play Gideon here. Or maybe even Inferno Titan. I draw... Play land, play a Gideon. I'm going to Gideon minus, kill this. 
pass the turn. In a good spot here, can draw another card with Jace next turn. Because us being at two or one is essentially the same thing. All right, he can still tap down Spire Bluff. Sure. Dak. Right, let's start by drawing a card with Jace. Burst Lightning. <laughs> can gain control of Mox, but it keeps him off mana. But I think I'd rather loot with Dak. Yeah, let's go Dak plus. Can't forget to plus the Gideon as well. I'm going to loot, because we can draw into like good stuff like, I don't know, removal for this or, okay, I mean this is actually good. I think I'm discarding, this is tough. I think I'm discarding Burst Lightning, because I could have braid the Mox now. But I can also just keep the Fiery Confluence in hand. So I'm just definitely discarding Burst Lightning. Now the question is, do I discard a Braid or Fiery Confluence? I think it's Fiery Confluence. And then I go land a Braid this now. And then plus Gideon. So Gideon's going to die to Registar, but nothing I can do. He's choked on mana. He has to discard the one card he has in his hand. So he only has the top of his library and he's on only four mana. Discards Trinket Mage, just has a land. And we get to play Inferno Titan here. So he kills Gideon. And tap one of our lands. A Johnny. It's actually really good because we can keep this tapped. He didn't even port. It's got to be wrong. I don't even think I want to loot because I don't want to discard either of these. These are like basically the best cards I could have, I think. Let's just go with Johnny. Keep Registar tapped. I'm not, not going to loot with that, as weird as that is. Um... I mean, I guess I could just discard two cards to make Dak getting closer to ult. But I think I'm just not going to loot with Dak. I don't really want to mill to to try to uh, get closer to ult. I don't think I need to do that. So he can't hold any cards in hand either because of Regisar. Can't believe we're like, I can't believe that we're not dead, honestly. These have been some pretty cool games. Remember, this is the same game that he has Armageddon. Setting us both back a lot. And both players have rebuilt. He kind of had to cast this Desperation Armageddon. These effects are, are pretty, pretty strong as well. They often end up getting cut from my deck, but I just wanted to play both of these just good. All right. We can also go next turn. We can play Inferno Titan and minus a Johnny to kill Regisar, which just leaves us a little safer. He can't play any artifacts because we have a DAC at four. And he can't keep artifact in hand because then he just has to discard it to Regisar. Flicker Wisp. Is he going to target like our O-Ring? Nothing we can do. I mean, Flicker Wisp is fine. I guess he can flick Regisar. Maybe this is not fine. But we can gain three with a Johnny. What's he going to flick? 
nothing nothing really I don't think flicking either of these flicking I don't think flickering either of these works oh he's flickering colonnade um so I don't have a blocker for flickerus so I don't think that's good I'm still gonna be able to cast his inferno no matter what yeah that didn't do anything why do you flicker that that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me that didn't do anything okay so we can tap colonnade here sure mountain all right so I think I want to start by looting with Dak. See what we hit. Keep this miscalc. And now what's the line? Because I can go, I think I just go keep your registrar tapped. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Keep this tapped, play an Inferno Titan, kill Flicker Wisp, and then next turn I can deal with registrar if I want, which I may just want to just leave it around anyway. You might, this might be game. One, two, Inferno Titan, F6. He's still playing off the top. We can kill this Registrar if we want. So yeah, he, he just looks to be black-white kind of creatures, value. He's just black-white base. All right. Let's go to game three here. Um, Do we want Day of Judgment? I don't I just think we have so much removal. I think we're like pretty well set up as the deck is. We could bring in Condemn, but I think I like all of our cards. So let's just, uh, let's just run it back. All right, game three here. We got a mulligan. We just got one land. It's not gonna work. This looks good. Keep and do I need to put a fourth land back? Could just put this mountain back. Yeah, I just want all these spells. Don't want to put a Johnny back either. Needle spires into Spire Bluff into Helix into deck. This is a good draw. Turn one copters really good though we have the helix for it but can't play it on turn one thought we just put this back we did that, that's a joke so we get to go spire bluff and then hopefully helix copter here so now like play a fairgrounds warden uh, just play a containment priest i mean what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play spire bluff let him crew copter and then kill copter because i'd rather kill that than just like Hope he doesn't have another creature. Or, or depending on what he does, I can just kill Containment Priest and then Dak gain control of Copter. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. He gets to loot again, but I mean, Dak gain control of Copter just seems pretty nice. I guess I could just wait for. No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go Spire Bluff and plan on killing the Copter because I can always Dat King control of Mox or something else. I'd rather just kill Copter. I might play another creature here and use that to crew Copter Soul Ring. Okay, I can gain control of that. Didn't work out in the first game, but he's probably just playing Trop for fetch land purposes. All right, now I helix this. White, red. So this was ideal for us. Mana tithe. Oh, God. Well, now with one card left in hand, I probably have to just stat gain control of Copter. He doesn't loot. Okay, so that probably has a creature in hand. Ooh, unexpectedly absent. 
That is actually good. <sighs> I could like put Copter back on top. I could wait on the Dak, but I think I like just going Dak Steel Copter now. I think it's like the safest. Dak, take Copter, and then he doesn't have much left. He has a card in hand that he didn't want to discard, but... Then we get to play a Johnny or Unexpectedly Absent. So this situation is where Unexpectedly Absent can be really strong, because you can kind of time walk them by putting a card back. Like, sometimes playing Unexpectedly Absent for X equals zero is where you want to be. Hmm, Vamp. Now we can get like a six drop. I wonder what he's gonna get though. See these vamp tutor like these put on top tutor effects like the put on top is is a real downside. Like he's still obviously in the driver's seat in this game. He got to get any card out of his deck, but all he got was a flicker wisp. Okay, he gets to get back copter. That is really, really good. That's that's rough. Obviously, I wish I waited on the uh, Dak now, but I didn't. So he's going to get Copter back in play, but he has zero cards in hand. Okay. All we drew is land. So this is interesting. I could just pass with unexpectedly absent up. Let him draw his card. Could even let him crew. And then put copter back on top. Or I can even just tuck copter away. My other option is just like a Johnny Helix Flickerwist right now. I'm just gonna unexpected absent this turn. Gonna even just wait for him to crew copter, because if he draws a land, he's gonna crew copter to loot away the land. But then I get to unexpectedly absent it and I only get hit for three. Yeah, so crewing copter. So I'll just unexpectedly absent this. I'm just gonna put it under the top two. We got got by Manatite really, really bad this game. There's nothing we could have really done. I needed to try to helix it. I guess we could have helixed on our turn, but he still had the mana tithe. So it's underneath the top X cards. Okay. Let's have another creature. Solemn. Okay, so he shuffled. He's shuffling the. Oh wait, is he gonna say no? No, he he got a land. So he shuffled the copter away. Wow, he shuffled it away. That's surprising. So now I just get to go a Johnny. Kill Flickerwisk, gain three, then he gets to kill a Johnny. But it's okay. He's got zero cards in hand. He's just drawing off the top. We have a Needle Spires here that we could start blocking with if we need to. You can also just play a Jace, minus it, gain two, draw a card. What? He just randomly drew Copter? Are you serious? He drew Copter faster? Wow. That is so bad for us. Oh, man. Alright, well, I need to go Jace, minus, and then O-ring Copter. That's insane that he shuffled Copter away and then drew it faster. I could plus. But I think that's too risky to give him a card. I'd rather just gain two draw. O-ring. I'm going to hit Copter. He's got to kill the Jace here. Again, our deck has a lot of powerful cards we can draw. We're not really drawing Ancestral that often. We can draw that. We can draw Inferno Titan.
Mystic Confluence, Gideon. Removal spells are fine. Trinket Mage, no target. Nope. Okay. So he can attack, but then we get to Needle Spires, eat a guy. So he can hit for four to lose. He can lose one of his guys to hit us for four, which I don't think is that great. Recruiter, that's really good. He's going to have like Tide Hollow Skuller, I think. Yep. Play it. We only have a land. It's a lot of power, though. So now if he hits us for four, it's actually, you know, probably correct for him. All right, so I just eat Containment Priest. Because this is a 2-1 first strike. And then draw Inferno Titan. <laughs> Banishing Light. Okay, well, we can go land, Banishing Light the Solemn, and then still block with Needle Spires. So now he can only hit us for three if he attacks at all, but he loses one of his guys to do that. Okay, oh, he drew Port. That's so bad for us. Of course, he drew Port right there. <laughs> Now we get hit for five, down to one. So Inferno Titan is still an out. We held on last game. Ancestral? Miscalc, okay. Fiery Confluence. That actually does it. <laughs> okay, so we can oh we can do a lot here. We can do two damage to each creature plus kill soul ring. We can also kill Mox Jet, which I think is the play, because then it cuts him off of black mana. So we're staying alive. Fiery Confluence. Two damage to each creature. Destroy target artifact. Yep. Destroy Mox Jet. We're staying alive. Staying alive. <laughs> now, please don't find a threat this turn. He does, and it can gain indestructible. Oh no! <laughs> He's gonna tap our needle spires. Oh, we tap spire bluff. Oh, because he can tap this next turn. Oh, so this cuts us off double blue. Okay. And are we staying alive? <laughs> our opponent making us sweat it out. Wow, he's really making us sweat here. <laughs> a sorcery speed removal spell doesn't do it, or I guess even an instant speed one doesn't either, because this has this can gain indestructible. Opponent just making the sweat, but he has three minutes on the clock. Colonnade is not gonna do it. Gonna pass. And I think we just die. Oh man, I thought we were gonna have that. And then we die to Kytheon. Make him sweat. GG's. All right, good game, and uh, I'll see you in the last round. One and one now. All right, one and one. We were barely able to not uh, hang on in the last round, although I felt like our deck was better than his. Um, we just weren't able to get there. Good match, though. There was a lot of interesting play. We're going to keep this hand. We have Ancestral. We have Miscal. Let's go. We're against 24-0-20. I don't know how you want to read that, but... Just gonna go island, go, leave up miscalc. We can just plan on ancestraling later. End of turn if, if we don't use miscalc.
or just wait on the Ancestral as well. Baleful Strix. Yeah, I'm just going to counter this. And then probably just Ancestral on our turn, or just play Dak. So if I go land, ancestral, I just would go up to seven cards. But I can also use my mana more efficiently and just play Dak this turn, looting. I'm going to resolve Dak. I'd rather do that. And then I get to loot. Plow Helix. It's all really good cards. Gideon is really good as well, but I feel like I want to keep these cheaper cards browned because I have this Ancestral, so I'm going to discard Gideon. I want I want the land too. Could have discarded land and been a little greedy, tried to Ancestral into more lands, but I'm going to discard Gideon Helix. It's probably pretty scary for our opponent. Like If I'm discarding these two, like what else do I have in hand? Could have discarded Splinter Twin as well, just not gone for the combo against Esper. All right, a few downfalls are Dak. Fire Confluence. Alright, let's lead with an Ancestral. Well, drawing three lands was pretty much the worst possible. So now, obviously, keeping this land looks terrible, but what if we drew three spells and then we had no land to play? Or what if you, like, countered this Ancestral or something? I mean, that was just pretty unfortunate for us. What is this? The salt monolith. Okay, well I can just kill that with fiery confluence, which I will do. Okay, this is fine. Destroy target artifact. Four damage to each opponent. And then I'll play spire bluff. And then plan on jamming inferno next turn. All right, what you got? Okay, Spire Bluff at six. Liliana of the Veil. I'll discard a Plains. And then I can jam Inferno into it, and he can't make a sack because his Liliana is going to go down to one from Inferno Titan. So unless he has literal Force Spike, where... Uh, we're looking good here. Could also just go Colonnade Attack Liliana. Get it off the board for sure, but I'm going to just Inferno here. We can attack it uh, next turn. So we're just going to go like this. F6. See what he's got. Each player discards a card. I'll discard this land for sure. So he has to do something to kill this Inferno here. And then we can kill Liliana. Yeah, he's discarding Recruiter and Spellseeker. Like, that's fine. I'm just discarding lands. Oh, and we have to discard another card. Now I'm going to discard Splinter Twin. I'd rather have the removal spell. Of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. Let's go Colonnade, hit Liliana. Oh man, that's so brutal. <laughs> I feel like that's the way just like my drafts have been going a lot recently. But Again, we're still in a fine position. Scare oh Gideon. Okay, well if he zeroes that, that can be that can be plowed. Can also just unexpectedly absent it away, just like tuck it pretty far. 
while he's tapped out. Hmm. I think I like that. I'm just gonna tuck it away deep. Pass the turn. I could have just attacked Gideon and then you planned on using the plow on it, but I think I'd rather just do this. Like so he draws a card, so now it's fourth from the top, so he's still a ways off of using it. Grim Monolith. Okay. Let's just kill Grim Monolith. Pass the turn. I'm not gonna deceive her anything right now. I'll just play it on end step though. Discarding the Splinter Twin was was rough there. Keeping the removal spell. All right, what is this? Four mana. What is he thinking about? Oh, Tasker. Sure, that can be plowed, so it's fine. So I just go Deceiver, tap Goggler Shrine. Tap target permanent and opponent controls. Let's tap that just to be safe. Plow this. And then untap, hopefully draw a threat. If not, just hit for five. Just play my land. I guess it's better to just hit with needle spires. We have two threats in these man lands, which is nice. We're drawing pretty live, although we're just hitting lands. Now I'm going to activate Colonnade, I think. Hit for five. Just more things kill this Needle Spires, I guess. I'm not really sure that's true, honestly, but. All right, he condemns it. He's got nothing. We draw the worst timed Chromox. <laughs> then we just hit for five. These lands are just, you know, taxing his removal, killing him. So man lands really good. Oh no, Gideon. Okay, you can kill Deceiver, but then he dies to just dies to needle spires. Okay. Dreadhorde Darkness. That's it's a good one, right? You can flashback ancestral. Let's go. Um, activate. Attack both at Gideon, then play a Dreadheart Arcanist. I sh suppose I should have played this first, but doubt it'll matter. Can flashback Ancestral next turn. You can flashback Ancestral. And plow right now, that's it. So that's really good because if he draws a creature now that doesn't really have a big come into play ability, we can just flashback plow on it if we need. Minus Gideon, sure. Signet. Alright, I don't think he has anything else. Looks like he does have another spell, but what is it? Anguished Unmaking. Hit himself down to five, zero cards in hand. So we don't get to flashback Ancestral, but we do get to go land, kill Gideon, and then um, he has to find an answer to this man land. So we're definitely ahead at this point, although both players are on basically no resources. Right, that's a good one because it can just chump this needle spires indefinitely. 
although all right I think I just start by attacking with needle spires he's gonna chomp with snake and then I just first lightning the Ephiromancer If he goes double block, it doesn't matter. I still just get to kill this guy. Just cast without kicker. Kill this. That was a good top deck for him and a good top deck for us. So we're even. I feel like my opponent last round definitely won the top deck war. He drew land. Okay. We drew land. So that's fair. <laughs> Hit him down to one. And now he has to draw an answer to Needle Spires or something to block it or chump it. I want to play this mountain. I don't think there's any reason to hold it in hand. We also have like chain lightning and uh, you know just like damage spells that kill him as well. But he drew land, so he's dead. Okay, plays land, concedes. Let's go game two. Don't think I want to change anything. Don't want the balance. Don't want the mana tithe. Keeping all of our artifact removal for his powerful, like, Grim and Basalt Monolith. I like it like this. Let's go. Alright, game two. In the last round, we're one and one. But we're up a game here, and I'm, I kept this hand. Yeah, we have this uncastable Jace, but we have a braid for, like, his Grim Monolith that he might play. Uh, we have Banishing Light for something else, and we draw Island. So, yeah, looking good here. Hopefully he plays Grim Monolith here. Okay, Rakdos Signet is also fine. I'm just gonna braid that. I guess I could have played Island there. That's 100% wrong. So now I can't play Jace next turn if I draw another Island. I'm unlikely to draw Island next turn, but I certainly could. So that was just straight wrong. Can play a Johnny next turn. Hopefully he just taps out for something that doesn't really matter. Doesn't have any other mana sources right now, so he may just be dead. We just get to go with Johnny, start plussing it. If he plays another like mana rock, we can just banishing light it. Plus a Johnny go. Oh, Miscalc, that's such a good draw. Definitely not going to attack with Needle Spires. I'd rather just Miscalc. Oops. I just said Johnny targeted himself. Just definitely that's the right play. Even if I drew Island there, I might just leave up Miscalc because we're just sitting here with the Johnny Vengeant in play. So it's just nice being able to Miscalc anything that he could do. Looks like our opponent mulliganed this game and kept a sketch on. Okay, Drew Plains. He's got to have something to cast here. No? Calling it. It's a good draw. Tap Scrubland. Or not tap it. It doesn't untap. This is the difference between a Johnny and Tamiyo. Tamiyo taps the thing and then it doesn't untap. A Johnny, it has to already be tapped for it to not untap. But this is also four mana. And this can helix something, so that's the difference there. Johnny, just better card overall than Tamiyo. Ooh, is he going to tap the Scrubland here? Wow, he is, so that doesn't untap. Anguish on making, now I just get to counter this? That's insane for me. Now this Scrubland doesn't untap, so he's back on two mana and no black source. That was a ballsy play, because I wasn't even activating Needle Spires. Never really looked at this art. It looks like kind of like a derpy, like, <laughs> yeah, like almost like bird, like stone creature going. Not the best art. Colonnade is way sicker. Look at that. That's dope. Okay, he drew island. We draw splinter twin. All right, let's plus this. Play a jace. If he doesn't have an answer to a Johnny, we just get to ult a Johnny. Win the game basically. I'll draw and play land and pass. All 
All right, any answer to a Johnny Vengeance or what? Emery, that's not an answer to a Johnny. So I think you're just dead. To go kill all your lands. And I have the combo here too. Could be the first time we win with the combo if he doesn't concede. I'll draw a card. I'll O-ring this guy. Play a mountain. And then we have the win next turn. Looks like our opponent is not conceding. Deceiver, tap your one land, and then combo. And our opponent concedes, does not make us click through it. That's nice of him. Two and one, barely lost uh, the second round. But that was a fun cube. I, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content, please subscribe. It's youtube.com slash snapbolt. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time.